Hello, I'm Professor Tim Spector from the Zoe Health Study. And this week, I'll be looking at high rates of COVID-like illness reported in the app, which age groups are driving this, and the top symptoms of both COVID and cold. So you try and get a better idea of what you might have. I'll also be talking to you about the rapid increase in COVID over the last two weeks, how effective new boosters are likely to be in preventing infection as well as hospitalization. And lastly, I'm going to bring you some more insights from our amazing blood pressure study and what we've seen uh, from the amazing contributions so far. And also details the next big community study you can get involved with. First, let's look at uh, the data from colds in the Zoe Health study. So a lot of people have colds. Um, no surprise you see around you. And this graph shows the colds in uh, orange compared to COVID in blue. And it's a huge increase. Uh, it's about, and we're seeing levels we haven't seen for a long time since October last year was when colds were at this level. And there are three or four times more than COVID cases. So both are really high, but you're more likely now to have a cold than COVID at any one time point. And uh, if you have any of these, these symptoms. Um, now, it's really interesting. Look at these trends. No one's really looked before, uh, but clearly every year we have the return to school and it's driven often by, by kids. Um, we think it's still likely to go up. And so we're going to keep an eye on this. Now, what people often ask me is, uh, is there an easy way of, of telling uh, whether you've got a cold or you've got COVID, apart from doing lots of tests? And even we now know that they're not always correct. Uh, and it's quite difficult. If you look at this chart here, you can see that sore throat is common to both at the moment. And obviously, both COVID and colds can change the variants of the virus causing them. So they're not always the same. But at the moment, both sore throat uh, is, is common in over 60% of both of these. Um, in a cold, you're more likely to have runny nose uh, than for COVID, and runny nose is uh, not so frequent. And uh, also more likely to be having sneezing, which again is, is less frequent with COVID. So there's no clear way to, to, to see it, but if you've got uh, a really bad sore throat with COVID, you're not having any sneezing or running or uh, other signs, you're less likely. But as you can see from this, it's pretty hard to tell and uh, you just need to get yourself tested. While the rates of uh, colds don't vary much between regions, they are varying between age and we for the first time have broken down your results uh, into age groups. And you can see the, uh, uh, the blue lines here of the, the under 18s that are really uh, driving this. So huge amounts of colds uh, coming back from school and giving it to parents and grandparents. I think that's uh, what's happening here. And you can see these, these seasonal trends that happen when you look across uh, the last year. Uh, interesting stuff. And of course, coming back to COVID, which is what we uh, should be more worried about, rates of COVID are continuing to increase. Uh, they're up at 216,000 every day. That's up 49% from two weeks ago. So it's quite a big uh, increase. One in 26 people have it now in the UK. It was one in 37 two weeks ago. Uh, our number is still hovering around 1.1. In a few areas, it's, it's higher than that. Um, and small differences, nothing major across the country. So it, it's uh, still fairly widespread. Um, looking at forecasts, my colleague Carl Friston from uh, UCL has done modelling, which I uh, am a big believer in, and he's suggested that this is going to hit a peak end of October, beginning of November, and then be calm again until March. And uh, that's that's potentially likely. It means we won't get one at Christmas if this is true. We'll wait and see what happens to that. Um, this means we are going to see 
these cases continue to increase above the 350,000 record that we had last wave, but um, not never quite sure what's going to happen. Uh, and you can see from the, the age graph that while children under 18 are still driving this, there's still increases in all the age groups. And you'll notice this, the wide conference limits, limits. This is the, the light colored line showing us that we don't quite have enough children at the moment to really give us really accurate results. So if anyone's out there who can log for their children at the moment, whether they're getting colds or COVID and being tested positive or not, that would be fantastic and really help our data. Obviously all this is happening despite the uh, recent rollout in um, boosters. So, so far about 93,000 of you have recorded a booster in the app and 75% of you have got what's called the spike vax, uh, Moderna vaccine. Now, what's clear is that the boosters now having a different effect to the first ones, both the booster is different and the uh, virus variant is different. And data um, shared by uh, Professor Friston showed that uh, currently the boosters are only about 7.6% effective in preventing infection in the first place, but they are highly effective, about 89% in preventing death when seriously ill. And for those aged 35 to 70, giving you a 61% protection, percent protection against serious illness and 76% protection if you're uh, under 35. So it still is looks recommended to get your COVID booster at the moment, as well as your flu jab to protect you from these uh, serious illnesses. But we'll keep an eye on it because the variants are changing uh, all the time and finding ways around us as we're moving away from the, the current variant, the, the, B, the BA5 into a, a variety of other ones. We could be facing more of a problem with flu because of our lack of exposure in uh, the last few years, it means that our natural offenses aren't won't be as good. And uh, I think this is a worry, particularly if we do see uh, both epidemics happening at the same time, so-called twindemic, which the uh, UKHSA has predicted. So high risk groups, the ones to keep uh, looking at, but of course, keep logging your tests in the app and we'll hopefully be able to show the signs of, of flu separate to colds or uh, COVID. And do log as many of these vaccines as you can as we try and understand uh, whether they're offering the same level of protection as uh, the early studies have suggested. Now, talking about blood pressure, we've had now over 35,000, sorry, 53,000 responses. That's amazing, thank you. And we've had a look at some of the data uh, at a quick look. And the first thing that we saw was that a couple of the big factors, uh, being overweight, uh, BMI, body mass index, and age, um, had the biggest effects on your blood pressure. And you can see that uh, in this graph here, everything going to the right is uh, has a, a negative impact on your blood pressure, is bad for it, increases it, everything on the left is protective. And we, we're seeing um, that hypertension, so a history of hypertension uh, is also uh, bad news, which is just really a reality check that our data is good. Um, now, just to put this in some context, for every 10 years increase in age, you get an increase of about two and a half millimeters in blood pressure. And for every three unit increase in body mass index, uh, that's weight that leads to an increase of 1.6 millimeters. So it's, it, these gradually creep up these risks. Um, now we also say that, that if you can offset a bit of the blood pressure, if you exercise five or more times a week, um, had a lesser effect than weight, but still uh, something that's fairly easy for, for people to uh, work on. Um, and Interestingly, we found this was the same across men and women. 
uh, because some, some studies have shown uh, potential differences. Um, now this exercise uh, difference was, was actually quite relatively large uh, in, in, in absolute terms, there's four millimeters and shows that uh, this is actually a much bigger effect than say, uh, cutting your salt levels down to zero. Um, so I would definitely advise people do exercise before cutting down on their salt. Um, smokers, as expected, had higher rates of blood pressure by about two and a half millimeters. Uh, those on HRT reported lower blood pressure, and we'll be talking more about that uh, soon. And I think what this really shows is how effective these, these surveys are and uh, how uh, we were able to do in, in a few weeks' time what it would have taken years to do in the past. And we're going to get a feature so you can record your blood pressure over time to see as you change lifestyle and seasons and other things, how that has an effect uh, on, on your uh, blood pressure and your risk of disease. We're also gonna be seeing how it links to different food consumptions. And I'm particularly interested in whether you can bring your blood pressure down by eating more potassium rich uh, plants like uh, bananas. And this is something you can really help us with uh, by participating in the big diet study. Now, the big bad diet study um, is something that's going really well. 54,000 of you have already agreed to take part, which is amazing. Uh, if you, there's still time to take part in this. And it is a, a long survey on your average food consumption that's gonna allow us to link your food and lifestyle to all these other risks of disease. Now, this is supporting our study of the role of the gut microbiome in cancer, which was one of the top voted uh, projects by you uh, a year or so ago. So do share this with anyone who wants to share their diet uh, as well. Um, and they're interested in, in food rather than COVID. So anyone can actually now go on the Zoe Health Study and uh, it's very easy to download it onto your phone uh, and you can see how to do it here. Anyone who goes on the app, including yourself or new, new people have a, a chance to take part in this huge intermittent fasting study, the largest in the world. We're launching this at the end of the month. Uh, so many uh, myths about fasting and its benefits or its risks. Uh, we are going to together find out about, and I can't wait to, uh, get going on the study with you. Uh, now, in conclusion, um, it's clear that from your data, we're seeing this autumn wave uh, of COVID uh, and three times more colds as well. So uh, we're getting hit by multiple vi viruses and we're about to be hit probably with flu, but uh, you never quite know until it reaches the, these shores because things uh, can change very quickly. Uh, I think there's very high risk in the next uh, few weeks of getting COVID as, as it drops below one in 30 people affected. So uh, do uh, in crowded spaces, wear masks and uh, go to well-ventilated places and also do get those, those uh, boosters and flu jabs, really important. I think shouldn't forget a high quality diet it was one of the things that we showed a couple of years ago with your help was uh, a major factor in reducing severity. And so making sure that your immune system and your gut health is really uh, tip top is also important. Um, now, there's a link in the blog to uh, the description of this to give you a few more tips. Now, um, do fill out the big diet study. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes, but it is going to be incredibly helpful, giving insights into your own diet, but also allowing us to do amazing science. Um, I'll be giving a short talk uh, this evening in London, a few lucky Zoe Health Study prize winners, but uh, don't worry if you missed out, as we'll be making uh, my talk available for everyone to watch 
And if you're coming along, I hope to see you there. So finally, uh, do remember to like and subscribe to our channel, share the app, the new look app with friends and family and support science and keep logging. Thank you.